Hey everyone, and welcome to the 12th episode of my Launchpad tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to learn about the different methods of removing drums, and we're going to see how this can improve our sampling. I've already loaded up a song here, and I've already aligned it to the BPM, so the kicks and the snares can match up to the beat. Now, there are some things we need to do before we can actually start working on the song. When you're manipulating audio in Ableton, there are some preferences which you would need to modify. Open up your preferences and go over to the Record Warp Launch tab. Make sure your bit depth is the same as your sample's bit depth. So my song has a bit depth of 16, so I should set the recording bit depth to 16. Make sure Auto Warp is turned off and that fades on clip edges are also turned off. You can also set the short samples warp to unwarped one shot. Now I can start cutting up our song and sampling it. I'm going to be focusing on this here region of the song, this here bit. I'm gonna mark it with a blue color. This is the part we're gonna sample today. So the first method of removing drums involves using fades. So at any point that a drum hits, we're going to make a cut. And then we're going to make a fade on each of these. In order to get the fades to show up, you right click and select show fades. And now you can see the fading mechanism. Our first sample has an obvious kick drum at the start. And now we can use this fade to fade it in. And that makes it nearly inaudible. We can do the same for a snare. And now we can do this for each and every single one of these, but it would be really hard to stay consistent. So instead of using this method, we can go down here into the envelope and now we can temporarily warp, but make sure that the timing stays the same. And now we can draw volume automation onto this. So zoom in really deep onto the first beat, make a point here and fade it down. And then drag this here point to around the end of the kick pattern. You can also smooth this out a bit by holding Alt. This will make a curve. And now you can copy this here segment, paste it up here. And then you can just keep duplicating that over your song. Now this fade here is a little bit too aggressive, but you get the basic idea. You have to play around with the length of the fade until you get decent results. When you're done making your fades, you have to record this. We have to record it to a separate audio track. So what we do is on our second audio track, we select resampling and then we arm this track and then we can start recording. And now this is going to get rid of the kick and the snare in our sample. And I just cut off the end. And now you can start sampling this segment. One thing to note is when you reach this part here, this here part has three notes spaced evenly across one beat. These are called triplets and you can't cut them up normally on this grid. You have to enter the triplet grid and then you can slice them up properly. There we go. And then we just crop these samples up and we can put them in our drum rack. Now we're going to have a look at a much better way to remove drums, and that's called phase inverting. The main problem with the fading is that it sounds really bad. It's a really cheap method of doing it, and you also don't get any original drums to work with. So I can play this right now without the drums, but I don't have any drums that I would play alongside it. So you would have to use someone else's drums from a different project or from a sample pack or something like that. It's not a very efficient way to do it. Instead, what we do, we try to find a clean kick and snare inside of the song. And by clean kick and snare, I mean a kick in isolation or a snare in isolation. Fortunately, uh, this song has a relatively clean kick and snare. Not all songs do. This can be mostly trial and error, searching around inside of your song. So in this here pre-drop segment, we have a really, really quiet synth going on in the background. And they have a loud kick here. And this is pretty much a clean snare. So what we do, uh, we need to crop these out and take them. And I'm gonna use a new audio track to keep the drums. Now you still wanna get rid of the synth sound. So you want to fade it a little bit, maybe shorten it. It's not always going to be the best, but I believe this is clean enough to use for us. And this snare, we can pretty much take it as it is. So we're gonna take it from there, gonna fade this here ending bit a little bit. And now we have ourselves a clean kick and snare. 
Again, this kick is not the best, but it's going to work for the purposes of this tutorial. So now we go back to our section and we move the kick and snare over there. Now you want to put this kick and this snare over the kicks and the snares that occur in the song. So something like this. So now if you listen to this, it's going to be really loud and it's going to flip through. But now here's the trick. You want to add a utility audio effect to your drums track. And then you want to turn on phase L and phase R. If we look at the waveform, this here is the main waveform of the kick. And this is the main waveform of our clean kick. We want the waveform to match up at all times. So we can try to do something more like that. There we go. And now I can uh, go ahead and replace that kick everywhere. There you go, done. So what the utility effect will do, it will basically take this sample and invert its polarity. So this wave, instead of going like this, it's going to go like this. So when it mixes with the kick in the original part, they're going to cancel out. And what you'll be left with is these vibrations here. And those vibrations are going to be the clean part of the synth. So if we now take a listen, we get some artifacts around these snares. So now which one do you want to look inside of it? And you can actually see that the waveform is ever so slightly off and you want to fix that. So you want to get as close as you can and try to align this waveform right there. Yeah, that's going to make it sound better. And then you want to do that for every single snare that sounds weird or broken. Basically, you want the waveforms to match up. If I listen to this now, It's about as good as it gets. This kick doesn't really invert well because this kick is kind of quiet. It's a lot quieter than the one here. It has a lot more punch. So maybe we can fix this by fading a little bit afterwards. When you're done aligning all of your samples, now you can go ahead and record this. Now we can actually see the resulting waveform of our removal, and then we can use that to actually check how well our removal has been done. This here snare left a really strong artifact here because it's quiet at the start. We can get rid of these small artifacts by fading around since we have a mostly clean snare to work with here. And this here kick didn't really seem to uh, remove itself at all. Most of the time you can just fix this by re-recording. Ableton can sometimes be really weird about this. Now we got a much quieter waveform we can actually use. So we can do that for every kick we have. You can hear that this one has a really strong punch. So we can start recording from a different point. This one here sounds a lot quieter. And it is. That's just how Ableton is. And there's not really a way around it. After you've finished recording, now you want to combine this whole recording into one audio clip. So we're going to make a second track for that. We're going to solo this and only record this track by making it solo. And now we can slightly fade this. So let's go back into our clip volume. And now we can make some small fades here in order to improve the removal. But these should mostly be like really small, not really aggressive. So this is the most you can do. You can already hear the difference between this track and this track. So now I'm just going to repeat this for every single segment. So now I could adjust this a little bit, expand it. And that's how you get rid of this click here. And now we can just keep duplicating that. Get rid of all the clicks. So these are really small fades in comparison to those we did before. We're only doing this to enhance our phase inverting. And then finally, you record this into a separate track. So we also have resampling only from this track. You can see how this has affected us. We don't have this initial hit anymore. And this snare also doesn't have the initial hit here. So this final audio file is what you want to sample. And now we're going to replace these with our new samples. And I'm going to place them on my right hand. And now you have the original drums left over here. So you can turn off the utility so their waveform is back to normal. And then you can also record them separately in a new track. So let's select resampling and only allow this track to push audio through. You only need a couple, not too many. And we can cut this kick and this snare and drop them up. And we can use them in our drum rack. And then we can play this alongside our actual sampling. Okay. 
And this way we can really improve our sampling because we get high quality drums that makes the whole set sound really, really good. That's gonna be it for this tutorial and I hope you learned something today about high quality sampling. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments and I'll answer as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye.